here in Duckburg. All right, all right, all right. Let's get to it today. Happy, uh, happy Monday, I guess. It's a happy Monday. Hope you had a good weekend, good Lord's Day, good everything. Today is going to be a good week, God willing. Uh, got lots of uh, lots of work planned ahead of us, and then this weekend is going to be opening day for Little League, which is going to be a lot of fun. My uh, my second youngest son is going to start t-ball, play t-ball for the first time. He's very excited, and uh, and then my uh, my two older sons are on the same uh, Little League team, which is going to be good. One is a little too old for the league he's in, but I really wanted them on the same team, and and my my younger one is not quite ready for the next step and so uh, you know we'll have the older one kind of take a step back for a little bit give him an opportunity to be uh one of the better players on the team which is which is going to be good but uh in any case uh let's uh let's jump to it today we're going to do part two of uh the sean demars doug wilson uh room for nuance conversation and uh, i've had a chance to talk to quite a few people about it and um most people um are kind of approaching it like I am, where they're just very impressed with Sean for even being willing to have a conversation like this. Uh, I did see a, a few people reached out to me and, and were very uh, not happy with Sean, um, not because he talked to Doug, but because of how he, uh, you know, uh, conducted himself. And, and well, I'm sure we'll get to that stuff. I'm, I'm just not trying to be critical here um, so much because even, excuse me, even having the conversation is... Um, yeah, you got to take your hats off to the guy for that. But uh, we'll get to it. We'll get to it. But uh, in any case, uh, let's jump into it today. We're going to talk about theological triage. You know, they just got done talking about, I'm, I'm sorry, uh, evangelical discourse. Yeah, we're going to talk about evangelical discourse. And uh, so uh, let's uh, let's see where this goes. Basically saying, like, people are trying to have difficult conversations on a on a time crunch. Like, Somebody writes a book about racial reconciliation in the church, and they're like, all right, come on our show. You have 15 minutes. 15 minutes. He's talking like, about nuance. Race yeah. in the church? You think we're going to? Yeah. So uh, let's, let's, let's have a long conversation about a complex issue. Right. Uh, and and ex- I think what you said is exactly right, brother. We want room for nuance precisely so that we can get to the truth, not so we can obfuscate right. the truth. Right. Right. Uh, Good but stuff, I, good stuff, yeah. I mean, listen, you know, you, you work with what you have, right? So people will have a short attention span these days, and you, you work with it. You know, you do what you can. You, you say the truth. You know, it's a complex issue, whatever, but you do what you can. And so uh, I'm not uh, one of these guys that wants to buck the trends. Look, if you don't have a long attention span to do a, an eight-part series on Sean Mars, <laughs> then that's okay. Then my stuff is not for you. That's okay. Um but I try to be I try to be brief and concise and pithy. Just doesn't always work out that way. <laughs> what you said is noted, and I will try to be as wise and discerning as I can in the use of that word. Uh, let's let's talk a little Nuance. bit about evangelical discourse <laughs> at, at at large right now. Uh, Doug, I remember uh, I remember I don't know how long ago it was, but you had a pretty long back and forth with Tabidi Onyabwile. I did. About yeah. your views on uh, racism and slavery and the history of that in our country. Right. And I remember reading those at the time, blown away by the charity, the grace, the love, the patience, the unity that was on display. Mm-hmm. That couldn't happen today. No. Well, and, it, and it came to sort of a crashing halt after because Tabidi got the treatment. With the nuance treatment, <laughs> he got he, Tabidi got worked over. What, what do you mean? He got oh, worked over. Right, we're going to start talking about the embargo and uh, and the things that uh, Big Eva, which allegedly doesn't exist, uh, <laughs> the things that Big Eva does to um, to really uh, isolate uh, Doug Wilson and his friends as much as possible. Um, and uh, I've seen this firsthand myself. Now, when I came on the scene, you know, uh, hardly anybody knew who I was. And then when I joined the, uh, the, the, the Fight, Laugh, Feast network, I didn't really have good relationships with Big Eva people anymore because I, I had kind of done my own thing and I wasn't part of uh, Doug's circle in any way. Um, but I was doing things that they had deemed, you know, inappropriate. You know, I, how dare you criticize Russell Moore? How dare you criticize Matt Chandler? Who are you? And so when I, when I joined the Fight, Laugh, Feast network, uh, it was no big thing. You know, I wasn't connected in those ways before. But 
I did have uh, some Big Eva connections uh, before I came online, you know, so they were okay with me once uh, before I, you know, started speaking my opinions. But once I did, they kind of disconnected and, and disowned me. Um, but I've seen this firsthand. You know, I, 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 there's a guy, and I, I'm not going to name him, that I was very close to. And uh, at one point in time, you know, he, um, he had quoted Doug Wilson favor- favorably. Um, and it was, uh, it was the kind of thing that gets like the me too, you know, whiny, uh, ladies, you know, of both genders all up in a, up in a tizzy. And, um, and then at the time, you know, he took a lot of heat for quoting Doug favorably. And, um, and so, and, and, and I happen to know that Doug, uh, actually reached out to him and said, Hey, you know, like. All right, the mob's coming, you know what I mean, just so you know. Um, and, you know, here's the, a good way to handle it. Here's some advice on how to handle it. And it was probably really good advice. I wasn't privy to the interaction, but it was probably really good advice because if anybody knows how to handle a, uh, a mob of screeching women of both genders, um, it's Doug, right? Um, but what this man chose to do instead was to, oh, I'm so sorry. I didn't mean it. I didn't mean it. And, 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 and say that, you know, yeah, he, you know, Doug's a very dangerous guy and this and that and all that. He got the treatment and he decided to choose. He chose poorly. Let's put it that way. Um, and so, yeah, th- this, this whole the treatment thing, this is all real. <laughs> it's obviously real. Um, but he's going to start talking about it. And so it should be pretty funny. His people, by for, his constituency. Being willing to talk with me. Yeah. He, um, in today's discourse, he platformed me. He treated me with respect. I treated him with respect. It, I thought it was a stellar. Oh. Uh, I was just very horrified oh. by that exchange. Yeah. And I would have wanted oh. to publish it in a book. Oh, absolutely. Uh, um, but uh, Tabidi didn't agree, and it was because he people yeah. he he was at the bottom of a dog pile. Yeah. Um, because he, you know, how dare he? Uh, yeah. Do what he did. Do you remember what year that was, or roundabout? Twenty thirteen. Oh, thank you. It's it's amazing, you know. Like it, it, it's it, this is this is so typical of of Big Eva trained people. So it's Big Eva, but also the people that Big Eva has catechized over the years. Um, but they're always talking about grace. They're always talking about uh, respect and charity and all of these things. But they don't know how to actually show it. To someone who's a more conservative than they are, they have no idea how to do it. And actually, maybe they do have an idea how to do it. They just refuse to do it. And um, and then you got Doug and his friends that you know we don't really talk about charity and 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 respectfulness that much. Um, it's certainly not our tagline or whatever, but we show it. But we show it. You know, I, I had a, quite a few people recently. I don't know if it, if the algorithm picked it back up. But a few people had had reached out to me about my conversations with uh, with with Ruslan, and, and by the way, a lot of people are telling me Ruslan's getting a lot better, and I, I believe it. I believe it because I, I think Ruslan is a, a genuine guy. You know what I mean? And so when you got someone who's a genuine guy, I, I think you tend to to get better uh, over over time. Maybe that's just me being naive, but I've heard that's what I've heard. I've heard he's gotten better over time. But anyway, my conversation with Ruslan, I, I, recently I had like three or four people reach out to me and say, hey, man, I just wanted to say like, man, you had a lot of patience. You had a lot of grace, a lot of, 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 of I don't really know any other words to describe it, but you, you just displayed a lot of uh, restraint uh, in that conversation. And I, I really appreciate that feedback because I was really trying. I was really trying. I know a lot of people wanted me to go in there and start throwing fists and stuff, you know, metaphorically speaking, of course, in Minecraft. Um, but I went into there not wanting to do that, and so I didn't. And, uh, it, you know, it's just so funny how it always happens that way. You know what I mean? It always happens that way. Huh, I didn't. He did. What, is this guy I, autistic? I, well, got a I was in the middle of over it. Here. I was in the <laughs> I didn't catch that the first time. That was funny. So, (laughs) Rigney... (laughs) Rigney knows the date. 
instantly. <laughs> Sean goes, what are you, autistic? You got a neurodivergent over here. <laughs> I wouldn't even have said that. that. That's good stuff, Sean. Man. Man, that was really good. <laughs> what are you, what is this guy, autistic? <laughs> Middle of behind it. Like, I'm gonna be I was like all of that sort of stuff. Um, you know, Doug came out to Minneapolis and his presence was a problem yeah. um, because it was, uh, you know, going to um, ruffle feathers in um, the African-American community where um, our pastors had can, been. Can I can I just say, too, that uh, that I, I, listen, like nothing against Joe Rigney. I got nothing against him, um, but I've just never listened to him ever. Um, but, man, I th I'm, I'm impressed. I am really impressed. He's got just such a. A, a nice way about him where he's like warm, but also very like calculated and hardcore. Like I, I just, I really like it. I'm, I'm just going to say, has he always been this way or is this new? And I saw like uh, someone in, in, on Twitter say like, like his eye contact game alone could get you in the fetal position in five seconds. Like it, it's just, he's intense. Has Joe always been this way? I gotta meet Joe. <laughs> he's just like an intense guy, but he's, but he's intense in like the best way possible. Just like so warm as well. Very impressive. Very impressive. Trying to build bridges, and and yeah. people were reading internet articles, and so we organized uh, kind of a get together back at, at one of those. Maybe it had been two thousand nine for that one, um, where there was kind of a back behind the scenes discussion, um, and then so and and that at, at some point then eventually led to I think the BD finally saying hey. Um, Doug's being mainstreamed enough. He's speaking at Desiring God conferences. He was writing articles for Desiring God and for TGC. I think, did you write for TGC ever? I think once. I think he wrote for it. So there was a season. Check to see if it's still yeah, there. Yeah, right. Yeah, uh, I doubt it. But, <laughs> Root uh, for nuance. Yeah, so. Um, that was and, another good one, Sean. Man, you got to give Sean credit, man. He, 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 he's, he did a good job here. <laughs> Got to check to see if it's still there. Uh, yeah, it's probably not. <laughs> Put it that way. They, Big Eva memory holes things like there's no tomorrow, man. <laughs> Big, Big Eva's known for that. Let's check to see if it's still there. And so there was a, <laughs> hey, this is a big enough deal. And Thabiti thought, I need to address it head on. And he decided to do so as a Christian and a gentleman. Like yeah. he actually said, I'm going to try to, yeah. we, it, this is serious enough that we can't just, um, you know, carpet bomb it and yeah. make accusations. Yeah. And then you had this great thing, but it, but it was the pressures to not do that yeah. were hard and heavy. I remember Eric Mason was supposed to come and speak at, in Moscow at one point. Mm -hmm. uh, did he back out for some yeah, of the reasons? He canceled the, because the uh, pressure was applied, basically. Yeah. So, and sometimes that we, we don't have a way of knowing uh, how much pressure it took. It might just be, hey, did you, ever, did you know who these guys are? Yeah. Uh, and then he backs out. Or it could be, I want to go, you really better not. I want yeah. to go. Are you really? Yeah. Um, we've had yeah. we've had numerous cancellations. Uh, people, this is what we call the embargo. Okay. Um, and the embargo, ba basically, this uh, this touches on something Joe and I were talking about, is that when uh, in your interview with Ligon Duncan, he's got a personal relationship with Keller. Mm -hmm. He knows him, mm -hmm. and he can say we differ on a bunch of stuff, but I'm. I know him. Yeah, I'm not really sure right. what's going on with the work video with him. there. It's very weird. And the same thing with Frame. I know, I know him. I've got all kinds of differences with him, but I know him. Yeah. And there are people who cannot afford to be in a relationship with me because they'd get to know me and I'd get to know them. And all of a sudden, they would be uh, sort of on the chopping block for uh, because they would have to. If they had integrity, they could figure this out. Hold all right, I'm back. Couldn't they pile have on. To defend you. And the one, it basically, in the whole evangelical world, and I'll say this to my dying day, give him all kinds of credit, is John Piper. Yeah. Uh, John Piper was the only one in that whole constellation of first tier conference speaker types mm -hmm. who uh, took the trouble to pursue clarity. Yeah. Right? And it's not like uh, it's not once, like he agreed. One, one, yeah, it's not once he gets clarity. It's not like he won't tell yeah. you yeah. <laughs> that you man, you're all messed up on this. Yeah. Um, but John disagrees with you like a Christian scholar and a gentleman, mm -hmm. and he and he does it within the context of a personal relationship. Mm -hmm. And 
that personal relationship uh, cannot be allowed to form in this uh, day and age uh, because once it forms, there would be people who start saying, you know, they're not so bad. They're not orcs out in Moscow. Yeah. Yeah. Right? That, that was the most illuminating thing. Like your interview with Ligon for me was really illuminating because of that contrast between the way and, it, and, and that the, the thing that was in play was the face to face interaction. I, so it was yeah that with- was that was a really important part of that whole video and if you remember uh, when I when I addressed that part um, what I was saying was that was an intentional sort of contrast that they were that they were making um, a huge part of this right so he's got Tim Keller on the one hand he's got this personal relationship and it's wonderful and then he's got these Moscow guys which he says essentially are demons um, and he treats them like that. He treats them like the unwashed, the unclean. You know, they're the tax collectors kind of thing. Um, and it's just so it, it like, and 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 he, you know, Ligon was so. Um, how do I? What's the word? Like, he was just so brazen about that that he was presenting it as if this was an example of Christian um, uh, uh, behavior. And it's just such the opposite of what Christian behavior is. It, it, it's just very, very. I mean, Ligon's Ligon's presentation there was so upside down. It was very satanic, in my opinion, um, it, it, to do that. And so, um, yeah, that was Rigney's dead on there. That was so illuminating to see how because every listen, you might not hate the the friend enemy distinction. You might not like the friend enemy distinction and the no enemies to the right stuff. But everybody does it. Everybody has a friend enemy distinction. It's just some people are honest about it, and other people want to pretend like it's it's not what it is. It is what it is. Yeah, oh, whatever. Keller teaching with Keller that said, "Hey, this is a big issue. We disagree on women's ordination and deaconesses or whatever." Mm-hmm. Um, but we, I know him, and he's a Christian brother. The same thing showed up with the in the second version with Frame and McLeod and um, Robert Raymond, who he had big disagreements on the doctrine of the Trinity on you know, doctrine of God stuff, right? Yeah, that stuff, yeah. yeah. so he was like, I, that, I, I'm not with them. I'm with the confessions, not with them, but I have all the affection in the world for them. And so it was like, so he, so it was clear he's capable of that. And for me, it helped to shed light on w- the embargo. It's why those guys won't accept the invitations to come out here, why when we're coming out there, those invitations aren't given. Um, but what's interesting in the present day, I mean, you're here, so there is an element of like, there's a next generation of guys who don't, who didn't, um, carpet bomb. I, I think some of this does go back to federal vision stuff where because everybody was call, saying heresy, 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 at this point, it would, if, to personalize him or anybody that's associated with FV, would require probably a walk back because mm-hmm. as you got in, if you had the conversation, if you had the debate and you real, and, and we keep amening stuff then it makes it really hard to go, you guys are heretics. It might be... Yeah, oh. Joe, Joe, Joe is on to something here, too. He's very, very perceptive. Again, I'm, I'm very impressed with Joe Rigney. Uh, let me know. Has he always been this way? I, I don't know. I have no idea. Um, but but I think Joe Rigney's on to something there. I think a lot of the 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 thing with Doug Wilson, ha, you know, it, it's something that happened in the past, and they went really far. And um, the thing about Big Eva is that they never, ever apologize. Never! They're always right. They're always right. And they cannot ever take, say, I got some egg on my face. That was a big mistake. Uh, like, Ligon needs to do that with, the, with this, about this, this whole uh, appearance on, on Room for Nuance. He lied numerous times. Objective, obvious, clear lies. He was deceptive. So deceptive. And for someone who preaches the right gospel and has the right idea of grace, he sure doesn't act like it. Because the beautiful thing about grace is when you get on this video and you freaking make a mistake, it's very, very available, very, very apparent what the next step is. You get on the video again and say, man, I made a mistake. I went too far. I was unclear. I was deceptive. I shouldn't have done that. Still don't like Doug. Still don't like the Moscow mood, but I went too far. That's what you do. Unless you're part of Big Eva, because then you never can do that. Because you have such a fragile, a fragile grip on your power and your authority. 
And so you think that if you were to admit a mistake, that that would, that would be the end. A lot of these men are very insecure. Very insecure. You've got, if you, if you change your position on something, pretty much across the board, you have to pretend like I never changed the position. I just, I, I you know, I, I'm just, maybe I'm, I'm nuancing it differently. I've never changed. I've always been this way. But that's changing, man. God bless these guys. Some of these guys are changing their ways. God is so good, man. God is so good. And so while I would be completely shocked if Ligon ever apologized for the deception that he perpetrated on Sean DeMars' show, I'd be shocked. I'd fall out of my chair. It is like God to do something like that. And, and I think Sean's appearance here is is a, a change um, that maybe it's because of the next generation. He wasn't involved in the Federal Vision controversy. Maybe that's part of it. That's what Joe seems to think. But, man, some of these guys are doing it, man. Did you see Andrew Walker's article about um, saying I was wrong about, you know, saying that getting vaccines or masking or whatever it was was uh, a way to love your neighbor. I was dead wrong about that. Do you remember th when he said that? And we did a video about it because it was a complete joke. It was a complete joke. And instead of quietly changing his position, and instead of, you know, you know, just ignoring it for the rest of time, which is standard Big Eva operating procedure, Andrew Walker, who is Big Eva adjacent, there's no question about it, he's adjacent. He wrote an article drawing attention to his mistake. And he said, no, I was wrong about that. And here's why I was wrong. And now I'm retracting it because I put a burden on you that I ought not to have done. And I was wrong. And man, I, I already had a lot of respect for Andrew Walker because he's done some things in the last few years that I think have been very impressive. But man, it went through the roof. Man, I was so white-pilled. I was so white-pilled that I emailed him. And I said, Andrew, dude, that article blessed me so much. It was such an encouragement. It was such a, a, it's, I was so, I was floored, man. Thank you. And he sent me a nice email back, you know, and whatever. But, um, and, and, and you know, don't go, if you're Big Eva listening to this, because I know some of you guys do. I know for a fact, I know for a fact some, <laughs> I'm not going to name any names, but, I know some of you guys do. Don't go after him saying he's friends with AD and he, you know, AD's an accuser of the brethren and all. He's not. We're not friends. But he treats me like a human being. <laughs> he treats me like a freaking human being. He doesn't, I don't think he dislikes me either, but we're not friends. Put it that way. So don't go putting any pressure on him. But, man, this is changing, man. I'm so white-pilled, guys. You have no idea. I'm so white-pilled. And it's not just because the Mets took two out of three in Los Angeles. Although that helps. No emphasis differences or you want to accent that or accent that. And it would be clear that, oh, that we're actually Christian brothers who can disagree charitably like lots of Christians do everywhere else. Right. But, okay. that, that, the, but the wall already went up. And so now efforts have to be made to make sure it does. But there's another generation coming up for, for whom that's not... That history's not there. That big issue is not the same. They they actually are listening more carefully, they trying to understand. And they won't have to walk anything back. Right. And they, they just got here. They just got here, so they don't have to walk anything back. And so it's possible to actually come have the conversations in ways that it wouldn't be for that older generation. Mm. The other thing to look at how gracious these guys are. They're not like telling them to walk it back or anything. Like they're just whatever. We'll still treat you well, even though you've said all these things about us that aren't true. Whatever. But listen, let me. I'll tell you. You need to walk some of that stuff back, man. You need to do the thing, grab your grab your uh, big boy pants, put them on, and say, man, I was wrong. Is that so hard? Is that You got grace, man. That's the beauty of grace. You, you admit your mistakes, you move on. It's not like God won't forgive you. It's not like Doug won't treat you well. He, of course he will. Man. Is that so hard? I thought we were Christians here. I'll tag on to this. It was really striking, uh, and I pointed this out in my review of Woke Church and, and uh, Ligg's um, forward to Woke Church, is that all the things he's concerned about in the federal vision are a glaring grease fire in Eric Mason's book, the Dekai okay. Worth, 
the, yeah. what justification means. Yeah. Uh, it's sort of like, okay, you can be as wobble I'm on, on justification, forensic justification, punctiliar justification. I'm a Westminsterian, right, right down the line. And Eric Mason's fooling around with it in all the ways that Federal Vision people were accused of fooling around with it. Eric Mason really does. Right. Just from a different angle? Well, it was, it was no. the justification is both uh, a status and an action. And righteousness is both intrinsic and extrinsic. Mm. And, there's, and, and there's confusions all built up in it. He's quoting um, Fleming Rutledge, so Ang Anglican priestess, and Ernest Kasemon, who's a you know, new perspective, or proto new perspective sort of guy. So all of that's in that book, which if it had been him... If I'd written that... Would have gotten the treatment. Mm -hmm. But yeah. it, got, it got passed over and it was nuanced. Right. And and so and I think the same thing is true even of like someone like Piper, because Piper gets criticized roundly by certain reform types for judge, his view of judgment according to works, um, that there's a concern that he's going to compromise justification mm -hmm. by faith alone and his definition of saving faith. Because which has he, to include affections, which includes the affections, yeah. which there's a treasuring Christ. And it's pro professors at RTS, you know, so it's um, Fesco and Waters who have really we had a debate uh, at ETS two years ago that I moderated between John and those two guys on the Saving Faith book. And those guys were, I mean, they were, they were cordial and they were um, gracious in the sense of they were treating John like a brother, but they were really at, you know, adamant, this is a big deal. You're smuggling love and you're smuggling things into the definition of faith. This is proto-Roman Catholic. Like they're, those are the kinds of criticism they're making. But Ligon has no problem associating with John, you know, mm -hmm. being friends with John. But it, it's a different sort of thing because the wall went up when it did, and now it has to be maintained. Hmm. Yeah, I think I think that's well, part of it, um, and we're gonna we're gonna stop here. That's definitely part of it about that wall. I think he's onto something there, but I don't think it's the whole story. I I, I think also um, when you look at John Piper versus Doug Wilson, um, there is a different style. You know what I mean? And I think there's a different target audience as well. Um, like Doug said, you know, I'm writing for a certain audience. Um, and so, um, <clears throat> Doug, Doug has this extra kind of, um, sinister nature because he doesn't use their style. John Piper does. John Piper uses the style of Big Eva. Yeah. Even though he's, um, in, in my opinion, um, better in a lot of ways than Big Eva. He does use their style. Doug doesn't at all, at all. And so, and I think it, my criticism of Ligon during the initial Room for Nuance podcast was that uh, he's he's so he's so deluded himself to think that his style is actually part of the commands of God. And so, if someone doesn't use his style, then they're 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 actually disobeying God. And it's very similar to what the Pharisees would do that they would you know their their traditions and their and their that that became on par with God's law. And so you don't follow their traditions, well, then you're actually not following God. Um, traditions are important, I think, you know, for in, in a lot of ways. Um, but once you kind of make that step to make them part of God's law, uh, you're doing something that uh, is uh, not no bueno. No bueno. Especially when those traditions oftentimes overturn the law of God. But... Um, but yeah, man, yeah, the, the the big lesson here is like, yeah, I, I agree with Rigney. Like they don't want to they don't want to admit they were wrong. I mean, uh, Ligon Duncan didn't even admit he was wrong about the uh, attributing John the Baptist or Jesus's words to John the Baptist making some kind of weird convoluted point. He still thinks he's right about that. He made the right point. It, but, but he, you know, he made up he was making some different point, but it, 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 he wasn't doing that because it, he the whole purpose of saying it was to make a different point. And if you make the point that he says he was trying to make now, it renders his entire presentation on Moscow completely irrelevant and completely nonsensical. But man, now good stuff, good stuff. Let me know again if I skipped anything that you definitely want me to cover. I will definitely do it. Well, I will consider doing it. I'll definitely consider doing it. But again, hats off to Sean Demars. That was a pretty good, pretty couple, pretty good lines in there, Sean. Um, yeah, yeah. You better be careful because that's not the style. It's not the style of Big Eva to be using words like autistic and neurodivergent in that kind of a way. It's a joke. They're not gonna, they're not gonna be too pleased with that. <laughs> but man, I hope Joe Rigney's right. I hope, I hope it's a generational thing, and uh, we'll be rid of this Big Eva standard operating procedure book. 
uh, forever in the near future. God willing, man. I hope it happens. Hope it happens. In any case, hope you found this video helpful. God bless.